Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. I've got another video here for you on our Fetid Bloat Drone. This is going to be our fifth and final installation of this, uh, this particular piece. So we finally finished it up after this video, so hang on tight for some final shots of this. As you can see, this is what we've gotten after four sessions on this miniature. We've gotten all of our airbrushing in, we've gotten most of our purples done, and a lot of the metallics have been knocked out, but we do have to hit up a lot of true metallics. We have to knock out a few more purple bits, and including some bluish purple parts. We're going to start by getting out our Violet, Sunset Purple, Emperor's Children, and nightshade purple to work on some of the purple and violet organic bits as well as highlight out a few remaining bits of inorganic materials that need to be purple. also going to get out some of our metal colored steel and aluminium. We're going to have to get the little bit around the eye. There's kind of some metal parts here and we'll be using this on some of the metal bits again later on in the project. We've got a lot of these spikes and a few various just cables and things will highlight out so you might see me break out some of these two metals. But I'm being very careful here to get this knocked out and then we're actually going to apply some yellows using our mahogany, Averland Sunset, Flash Gets Yellow, and Ivory, our non-metallic work up here, to get some of the little chains and staples that are holding these flesh bits here. For the tubing down here that's yellow, I'm going to bring mahogany into the shadows, a little bit of Averland Sunset into the main part of the tubing, and slight bits of Flash Gets Yellow and a little bit of that Bright Ivory to get a bit of a highlight. I'm not going for a very shiny looking cable here, I'm actually looking for a very matte yellow tone.
besides the staples on the face, there's two other pieces of non-metallic gold that I want to bring in on this. The tri-lobe icon on the back here and the fly icon on the side that you can see I'm bringing in mahogany here and we're going to work that mahogany and Averland sunset mix quite a bit until we're happy with it so I'm going back and forth here mixing a little smidge of matte black into that uh, brown tone on the back of the fly for a very deep dark shadow but not very much mostly we're going to focus on the yellows and then we'll bring up the high points so far has been blends of yellows and brown we're bringing in some very specular tight highlights with titanium white here to finish out this icon Same thing that we did on the icon we're doing on the fly and I'm trying to bring in very small scratches and texture into it we don't want our metal looking completely flat necessarily there are some existing scratches as well as some brush stroke scratches that I'm gonna bring in here so mix it up a little bit just kind of tend to make them in the same direction to give it that brush look purple I need to touch up here and get that knocked out since we missed that on one of our last sessions and we're also gonna bring up a lot of this fleshy bit that you see just under that on both sides Usually for the final highlights, I like to bring in Fulgrim Pink for a nice off-white pink. But uh, for this one, I actually just mixed a little bit of our Titanium White into the Emperor's Children Pink that I had out on my palette, just since I needed a small little smidgen of that. We'll touch up some other little bits here that we've missed. There's some metal straps underneath the turbines here on each side, so we'll hit those as well.
This part may be a little hard to see. There are a couple of glowy vent-like items underneath here. I'm using my same yellows that we used on the rest of the yellows here to give that a slightly heated look towards the front, but not terribly so. This is a very minor detail, so I'm spending a minimal amount of time on this. that we brought out those yellows for the non-metallic golds is that we also use those same tones and paints on the horns that we've done on this scheme as well. So once we're done with these last little strokes here, we're going to move to the small horns around each of the turbines. We're going to slowly mix these up using various mixtures of mahogany and Averland Sunset and then into our flash gets yellow and bright ivory with a specular highlight of titanium white at the very tippy tip.
there's something a little different we have to do here. The bottom of the bloat drone has some cables that are actually dragging along the ground in toxic sludge. So I want to make those glow a little bit. Uh, here's some silly putty. I'm going to use this as a mask so I don't accidentally overspray a bunch of my miniature. We're going to break out matte black, iosin green, necrotite green, flash gets yellow as well to tone the bottom part of those cables in such a way that it looks like they're getting a bit of glow from the toxic sludge that they're dragging through. We'll see what I mean in just a moment. My black paint is not drying very quickly because I took it very thin, but at this point I've hit it with a little bit of heat. We're going to add that Iosin green and Necrotite green and a little bit of that flash gets yellow just at the end. Uh, I'm going to try to direction this up and add a little bit of glow on a few different parts of the underside here that are hanging especially low like this cable and the very bottoms of the bile spewers. I don't want to go very heavy, I just want to give a hint. color theme that we really haven't finalized yet that is the blue tinted violet on the weapons so we have two bile spewers and the needle thing in the front that we're going to hit with violet blue violet and blue horror
now we're going to finalize out the details of our mini by hitting the edges with Necrotite green and Flash gets yellow, as well as hitting some of the shadows with a bit of our nightshade purple. It's a nice way to help correct some of the shadows. As a part of our edge highlighting, I'm going to make sure to hit all of these little pits and pockmarks in the armor. If you're doing some sort of weathering for your scheme, these are great places to gather a bit of some sort of rust, corrosion, dirt, have streaks and grime, etc. I'm going for a very clean look here on my Death Guard, so I want it to look like it's been freshly shorn and popped and cracked, and things are just now starting to peek through. So I'm hitting them making them as bright as I can and bringing back down smudges and darker areas with a little bit of that nightshade purple. Not using black over the green, the nightshade purple gives me a much more rich tone.
for the final details, we're going to bring out some of our Vallejo Metal Color Aluminium here to highlight out the steels and give those a little bit more depth and texture. So the only thing remaining at this point is to actually attach this to the base which we had previously constructed and painted and add some water effect. That water effect is from Woodland Scenics. It's realistic water. It takes six hours to cure and I normally apply a couple of layers to it. So let's get it detached and started. And here we are, the final result. We've let this cure overnight. And before applying the water effect, we varnished this as well and let it cure for six hours. So now we have a finalized fetid blow drum. Thank you so much for joining me on this series. This has been my first YouTube series. I plan on picking up some more, doing some nice large projects like this again. It's been a real blast. I have a lot more Death Guard backlog to go through, so wish me luck. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, got a lot of information out of it. I will see you again next week with another great video. And I will see you on the weekends on Twitch as usual. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, paint some minis.